Hello and welcome to this video on improper integrals on bounded intervals. In one of our previous videos, we discussed definite integrals and Riemann sums. As you probably remember, the definite integral was introduced for functions defined on a closed interval, AB, namely, an interval that includes its endpoints. These functions also had to be bounded, and in most examples we focused on continuous functions. In this video, we are going to generalize the notion of the definite integral to unbounded functions, whose domain is not a closed interval. Let's start by looking at some diagrams. In the first diagram, we see a region bounded by a graph of a function f and the x-axis over the interval AB. However, the function f is undefined at B and has a vertical asymptote there. The second diagram is similar. This time, the function f is undefined at the left endpoint, A, and again has a vertical asymptote. In the third diagram, the function f is defined at the endpoints, but it is undefined at some point in the interior of the closed interval, AB, and has a vertical asymptote there. In all these cases, we will not be able to find the area of the region by simply writing a usual definite integral as the function f is not defined on the full closed interval, AB. And so the problem is, how can we compute areas of regions, such as in these diagrams? The following definitions will help us resolve this problem. 1. If f is continuous on the interval AB, closed at A, open at B, then we define the integral from A to B, f of x dx, to be the limit as c goes to b from the left, integral from a to c, f of x dx. 2. If f is continuous on the half-open, half-closed interval a, b, this time open at a, closed at b, we define the integral from a to b, f of x dx, to be the limit as c goes to a from the right, integral from c to b, f of x dx. And finally, if f is continuous on the union of the two half-open, half-closed intervals, a to c and c to b, then we define the integral from a to b, f of x dx, to be equal to the integral from a to c, f of x dx, plus the integral from c to b, f of x dx. Note that in the first and the second definition, the improper integral from a to b was defined as the limit of usual definite integrals as c approached one of the endpoints of the interval, either a or b. In the third definition, the function f is undefined at a point c in the interior of the interval, and so the integral from a to b is defined to be the sum of the two improper integrals from a to c and from c to b, according to the first two definitions. Now let's check a few examples. Compute the following integrals. Integral from 0 to 1, 1 over 2 root x dx. Integral from 0 to pi over 2, sin x over root cos x dx. And integral from 0 to 1, ln x dx. In part a, we have an improper integral, as the function 1 over 2 root x is undefined at the lower bound, x equals 0. And so, according to our definitions, what we need to do is replace the lower bound by a variable c, compute the integral from c to 1 of the function 1 over 2 root x dx, and then let c approach 0 from the right and find the limit. An antiderivative of 1 over 2 root x is square root of x, and so this is equal to the limit as c goes to 0 from the right, square root of x, on the bounds c and 1. We substitute the bounds and compute the difference and we get limit as c goes to 0 from the right, square root of 1 minus square root of c. And as c goes to 0, square root of c goes to 0 as well, and so the limit ends up being 1. In part b, we have another improper integral. Cos of pi over 2 is 0, and so the function sine x over square root of cos x is undefined at the upper bound, pi over 2. So this time we need to replace the upper bound with a variable, c, 
and compute the limit as c goes to pi over 2 from the left, integral from 0 to c, sine x over square root of cos x dx. We use a substitution, u equals cos x, and so we get limit as c goes to pi over 2 from the left, integral from 1 to cos c, negative 1 over square root of u du. An antiderivative would be negative 2 root u, and so we get limit as c goes to pi over 2 from the left, negative 2 root u, and the bounds are 1 and cos of c. We plug in the bounds and compute the difference. We get limit as c goes to pi over 2 from the left, negative 2 square root of cos c plus 2, as the square root of 1 is 1. When we take the limit, cos of c will approach 0 as c goes to pi over 2, and so we end up with 0 plus 2, which is equal to 2. In part c, we need to find the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log function. This time, our function is undefined at the lower bound, 0, and so we need to take the limit as c approaches 0 from the right, integral from c to 1, ln x dx. To compute the definite integral, we use integration by parts. We take our u to be ln x, and dv would be dx. We get limit as c goes to 0 from the right, x ln x on the bounds c and 1, minus the integral from c to 1, x times 1 over x dx. The first term gives us ln of 1 minus c times ln c. The second term is the integral of the constant function 1. An antiderivative would be x, and when we plug in the bounds, we get 1 minus c. And so we end up with negative the limit, c goes to 0 plus c times ln c, minus 1. The limit is equal to 0. This can be done using L'Hopital's rule, and so we end up with 0 minus 1, which is equal to negative 1, and that's the final answer. Now let's have a look at another example. Consider the region S bounded between the graphs of y equals 10x and y equals secant of x for x's between 0 and pi over 2. A. Write an integral that calculates the area of the region and explain why it is an improper integral. B. Evaluate the integral you found in part A. Now, it is not difficult to see that secant of x is greater or equal than 10 of x for all x's between 0 and pi over 2. And so the area of the region S is given by the integral from 0 to pi over 2 secant of x minus 10 of x dx. This is an improper integral, as the functions secant of x and 10x are undefined at the upper bound, pi over 2. In part b, we need to evaluate the integral from 0 to pi over 2, secant of x minus 10x dx, which was obtained from part a. As this is an improper integral, and the function is undefined at the upper bound, pi over 2, the integral will be equal to the limit as c approaches pi over 2 from the left, integral from 0 to c, secant of x minus 10x dx. To evaluate the definite integral from 0 to c, we use previous results or a formula sheet. An antiderivative for secant of x is ln absolute value secant of x plus 10x, and an antiderivative for 10x is minus ln of absolute value of cos x. When we plug in the bounds, 0 and c, we get ln absolute value of secant of c plus 10c plus ln absolute value of cos c minus ln of 1 plus 0 in absolute value minus ln of 1. This simplifies to ln absolute value of secant of c plus 10c times cos of c by properties of logarithms. Also remember that ln of 1 is 0, so the last two terms are 0. The product inside the logarithm simplifies to 1 plus sine of c 
And so now we need to find the limit of that expression as c approaches pi over 2 from the left. As the limit of sine c as c goes to pi over 2 is 1, the final answer ends up being ln of 1 plus 1, which is equal to ln 2. So we've seen a few examples of how to compute these improper integrals. In each example, we had to first compute a definite integral and then evaluate the limit of the result as c approached a number. This means that if that limit is not finite, for instance, if it's plus or minus infinity, then the improper integral will not end up being a number. In these cases, we say that the improper integral diverges. However, if the answer does end up being a number, then we say that the improper integral converges. Also remember that these improper integrals look pretty much like a usual definite integral. The only way to identify them is to examine the function closely and check if it's unbounded or undefined at some value between the lower bound and the upper bound. Let's summarize these comments and look at a few more examples. Improper integrals can be equal to positive infinity, negative infinity, or not exist. In these cases, we say that the improper integral diverges. If the improper integral is equal to a number, we say that the improper integral converges. And finally, an important reminder. It is your task to identify integrals as improper. These type of integrals look like a usual definite integral and you have to check carefully the function and find out if we have a definite integral or an improper integral. Now let's move on to our next example. Show that the following integrals diverge. Integral from 2 to 3, 1 over 2 minus x dx, and the integral from 0 to pi, secant square of x dx. The first integral is improper because the function 1 over 2 minus x is undefined at the lower bound, 2. And so to compute it, we take the limit as c approaches 2 from the right, integral from c to 3, 1 over 2 minus x dx. An antiderivative for 1 over 2 minus x is negative ln absolute value of 2 minus x. We plug in the bounds, c and 3, and then we need to take the limit. We get limit, c goes to 2 from the right, of negative ln 1 plus ln absolute value of 2 minus c. Ln of 1 is 0, and so we have the limit as c approaches 2 from the right, ln of absolute value 2 minus c. Now, as c approaches 2, the absolute value of 2 minus c will be a small positive number, will approach 0. And so the logarithm of a variable that goes to zero will give us a limit of negative infinity. Therefore, the given integral diverges. In part b, we need to find the integral from zero to pi of secant square of x dx. Recall that secant of x is one over cos of x. And so the function secant square of x is defined at the endpoints, zero and pi. However, cos of pi over 2 is 0, and so the function secant square of x is undefined at x equals pi over 2. As this function is undefined at some point in the interior of the interval 0 to pi, what we need to do here is split the integral as a sum of two integrals, from 0 to pi over 2 and from pi over 2 to pi. Both of these are improper integrals. Let's compute the first one. The integral from 0 to pi over 2 secant square of x dx is an improper integral as the function is undefined at the upper bound, pi over 2, and so we need to take the limit as c goes to pi over 2 from the left, integral from 0 to c secant square of x dx. An antiderivative for secant square of x is of course 10 of x, and so we have the limit as c goes to pi over 2 from the left, 10 of x, and the bounds are 0 and c. We plug in the bounds and we get the limit of 10c as c goes to pi over 2 from the left 
and that limit is equal to infinity as the function 10x has a vertical asymptote at x equals pi over 2. Similarly, we compute the other integral from pi over 2 to pi secant square of x dx. This time we need to take the limit as c approaches pi over 2 from the right, integral from c to pi secant square of x dx. The antiderivative is again 10 of x, and when we plug in the bounds, we end up with the limit as c approaches pi over 2 from the right, negative 10c, and this is equal to infinity, as the limit of 10c, when c goes to pi over 2 from the right, will be equal to negative infinity. So therefore, the integral from 0 to pi of secant square of x dx is equal to infinity, as it is a sum of two improper integrals and both of them are equal to infinity. Therefore, the integral diverges. So to summarize, in this video we extended the notion of the definite integral and saw how to integrate functions which are unbounded and whose domain is not a closed interval. This is called improper integration, and it is normally done by first computing a definite integral and then evaluating a limit. Improper integrals can be equal to a number, in which case we say that they converge, or may be infinite or not exist, and then we say that they diverge. Improper integrals are important objects in mathematics, with many applications in other sciences, like statistics, physics, and more. So thank you for watching, and don't forget to try our practice problems. Good luck!